Good morning, everybody. It's Jim Feist in Las Vegas after the first NFL game on Thursday night. And I'm joined today by Joe Mack out of New York. Joe, that was not good football, but if you had money on it, <laughs> thank God for gambling on sports because everybody would have turned that thing off. But there was drama because of your money... The total was pretty much in pocket all the way. But who was going to cover was definitely questionable right to the end. Terrible football, but still there's drama if you have money on it. Now, you're right about that. And then the funny thing is, they made us all wait 45 minutes to kick it off because of the bad weather that was going through that area. Uh, no, it was bad football, Jim. Uh, 26, 27 penalties, whatever it was. Uh, a couple of to me, questionable, roughing the faster quarterback. And as you and I have discussed throughout the summer, you know, it's a changing NFL. They certainly, you know, they're very cognizant of concussions and life-threatening type or career-threatening type injuries to guys. So the game, I don't want to say it's gotten softer, but they've definitely become more protective of the players. And the, and the quality of the game has suffered. And, uh, you know, last night what we saw were two teams that were not sharp, uh, really, had, they were shaking rust off right to the bitter end. And, you know, as you said, if there's money on the game, there was a lot of drama there. I mean, a lot happened. Um, we could take this any which way. But one thing I wanted to say is I thought, and I gave it a thought when Philadelphia got deep down fields late in the game right before they scored the go-ahead touchdown, I thought Atlanta was going to let them score a quick touchdown so they'd have more time on the clock. And I almost think that when Jay Ajay scored that touchdown and put him ahead, that Atlanta did not make a big effort to tackle. So I think that went through their head, which was not bad strategy, because let's face it, otherwise you're not going to have much time, you're going to have no timeout, and you you know, you're going to need some score on the other end. But let's face it, I know it's the first game, and I don't want to totally bury somebody, but and I'm not an Atlanta Falcons fan. I do think they're going to win 11 or 12 games this year and, and get to the playoffs. But I'm getting really tired of Matt Ryan not being successful in the red zone. I mean, Steve Young said it on ESPN last night, and I think he hit it right on the head. He said, if you're an NFL fan or in his case, a former quarterback, a Hall of Fame quarterback, you want to put Matt Ryan in that upper tier of quarterbacks. Uh, with, you know, I mean, below Brady, but you know, in the upper crust of guys that are A or at least B-plus quarterback. But you know what? He doesn't get it done enough in big spots. And, I mean, one of nine in red zone situations last night, and it's just a terrible interception that kind of got glossed over with, a, with you know, early in the fourth quarter where he threw it down by inside the five-yard line. He just doesn't get enough. You know, he just doesn't play big-time football enough for the Falcons. And, Forget what they pay of all these quarterbacks and making them in. He's, he's got to show me something. This guy's been in the league 10, 11 years now. He doesn't get it done. I know they were getting on him because he keeps looking for Julio Jones. You know, I don't blame him for that. But come on, make make some throws, make some plays. Don't take so many sacks that he takes. You know, that, that would worry me if I was the Falcons. I thought this was a game that they could and would win. And uh, that would scare me a little bit out of the game. But... Overall, as you said, rough game to watch. Too many penalties. Uh, lot, lot of, just a lot of bad play overall. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're going to see a little bit better when we get to Sunday's card with the NFL. You know, Joe, all those, all those points are excellent. I want to bring up, a first of all, I want to ask a question, and then I want to make a statement. Um, two years ago, in 2016, they led the league in scoring. Shanahan was the offensive coordinator. They were averaging 33 points a game. Last last year, they averaged 21. And last night, of course, they got 12. Um, it, it, the drop-off at the cor offensive coordinator, I mean, it's pretty obvious. They got the same players. Um, it's pretty obvious that there's something happened between the switch from Shanahan to Sarkeesian. Now, granted, Sarkeesian was a college guy. And, but there's something missing because in, in the red zone, this team is awful. 
they might be one of the probably one of the worst in all of football in the red zone. So I got to look at at that situation and say I'm not and I'm not enough of a football guy X's and O's cut to say that's the reason, but it sure looks like the reason because we dropped from one offensive coordinator to another and they continue to decline in offensive production with the same team. So that's that's something that it's got it pops into my mind. I don't know the answer to it. I don't know what he does wrong, but it sh- it sure does show up on the field. Now another statement I have to make: this game when it opened, and I need to clarify this for my clients. When the game opened, it was Philadelphia five and a half, but a lot of people thought at that point Wentz would be the quarterback. Then there was a couple injuries: Jeffries, Wentz couple offensive linemen dinged up. They dropped the line to four, so Philadelphia was four. Then throughout the week, money just kept pouring in on Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. So I'm sitting with Pac in pocket, you know, a couple dimes, three dimes actually, on Atlanta plus four, and I'm looking now and eventually gets to Philadelphia plus one and a half. I said, well, this is ridiculous. I mean, I got the Super Bowl champs at home where they were 9-1 and last year. They have a great defense. They beat this team last year. You know, I know Foles didn't run a lot of RPOs in case you don't know what that means, run pass option, which is what he is best at, by the way. So, you know, and I also feel I have the best head coach. I definitely feel that. I mean, that goes back to what happened in the Super Bowl, the 28-3 garbage and everything else, but so I end up on both sides of the game hoping for a middle and almost got it, by the way, middle or a side, and but that's what happens when you put out early releases and you you have line moves like that. You get line moves like that in college football. You don't typically see a six and a half or seven point line move in a pro football game, unless, like, everybody's hurt, which wasn't the case, because we all knew that potential for Foles or Wentz was there from the beginning. So I needed to make that statement, so anybody out there, I clarify that. I, You know, it's, it's tough putting out a... It's going to be very tough putting out early plays if we're going to see line movements like that. And there was no reason for it. Uh, really no reason for a six and a half, seven point move on a pro football game. I would agree with you. You know, it's funny how it turned out because when the opening line came out and you said five and a half, and I, I saw on this uh, four and a half as an early, early line, I thought the Falcons were a great value, a really good bargain there. And then, as you said, it went down. Now, I said this on the podcast last week. You know, the, the ESPN and NBC, whatever, they were feeding us clips all summer of Carson Wentz with the knee brace on. I never thought he was going to be ready. And I don't think the Eagles ever really thought he was going to be ready. So why was there some kind of doubt out there as to who was going to quarterback here? I mean, I, I honestly thought from, let's say, August 1st on that it was going to be Foles. And yet, I think a large part of the line move was, like, as you said, based on the perception that Wentz might play. I don't know why that was ever... It's even a thought in anyone's mind. I don't think it was ever going to happen. Uh, and then it turns around, and as you said, the Eagles go off a kickoff, which was, you know, delayed 45 minutes with the weather, and then they make, you know, the Eagles are one, one and a half, and I'm thinking, this is crazy. As you said, this is a Super Bowl champ. They got a great defensive front seven, maybe the best offensive line in football now, and you're, you're taking something with them at home on, on opening night. Uh, the line was so twisted and crazy the whole time, Jim. I don't think you're going to see it that way. And as you said, you normally don't in the NFL. This was an exception. My case with this whole line move was, why was it seemingly so dependent on who was going to quarterback the Eagles? To me, it never should have been a, a real choice. And, I mean, I think the coach Peterson knew all along that Wentz was not going to be ready for this game. And it's probably not going to be ready for another couple of weeks. So, Anyway, I don't think you're going to see many of the line moves like that. That's, uh, if allow for that <laughs> when I'm doing podcasts, my 
dogs sometimes interrupt and they have their own opinion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're you, allowed. <laughs> usually, usually they bet on the dogs, of course. But I got. It. Um. Well, you know, in in the last few years, we've seen big money come in on plays, college and pro. And for the other, as a matter of fact, the other day, a guy walked into a casino and he bet a hundred and thirty thousand dollar parlay on two football games in in college. And the casino, some of these casinos do take money like that. Uh, obviously, not very many people are going to bet a hundred and thirty thousand dollar parlay. Well, he ended up losing both sides of the play, so he lost a hundred and thirty thousand. But the bottom line is, there's a lot of big money that in the in, in previous years, big money was usually sharp money. But now there's so much money out there, and the rich keep getting richer based on you know the you know, society and the way the tax structure is and everything. There's a lot of big money that's actually stupid money, and. And a lot of people see these big money moves and they think, oh, that's sharp. Not the case. You really now have to know who is making the plays. Because the big money will look the same if it's a sharp or a square. And, and that's what happened here. The money that came in on Atlanta was, was basically square money or stupid money. That, and that was, that's what happened. And you have to take advantage of that. You know... We, we both represent services. Mine is jimfeist.com. Yours is uh, Jim Hurley. And if you want to win money doing this, you have to have guys like us that are watching these moves and understanding what's going on on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. I'm sitting here with five screens open right now, watching moves just like the people that invest in stocks and bonds and commodities and options. I'm doing the same thing, but I'm doing it for sports. So if you want to win money at this, you can't just look at the opening line and say, oh, this is what I'm going to do. It doesn't work like that anymore. It's gotten more sophisticated and more complicated. So that's what we do. I know you've got big stuff coming up this weekend. Uh, Joe, you want to talk about what you have going on? Yeah, and you make a good point. And you, you know what? It's all about the homework, too, Jim. I mean, you and I have been doing this. You've been doing this a long time. I've been doing a little less in length than you have. But still, you got to do your homework. you got to study. you got to track those line moves. I mean, we had a monstrous week last week, the opening week of college football at the Jim Hurley Network. We wound up sweeping the board. It really was a, a wonderful Labor Day. We started it off with Northwestern on Thursday night beating Purdue. We ended it on Labor Day evening with one of the easiest wins you can get with Virginia Tech plus seven, winning outright and easy over Florida State. In between, we squashed them with uh, a couple of double-digit dogs that won outright. Cincinnati over UCLA, loved that game all week. And uh, BYU over Arizona, I liked the game. I didn't quite know if they get the outright win, but they did. So it was a monster week. We see a lot of value in a few games here on this Saturday card. Uh, that's what it's all about. It's about finding, at least for us, a, a lot of nice-sized dogs and uh, live dogs. And sometimes in these early season games, some of these college teams, the numbers are put up there, and lots of times there's a lot of reputation attached to it, and you have to see through it and say, wait a second, this team is not the same team as they were a year ago or two years ago. So anyway, we're looking for value. We're also looking to smash them in the NFL. First Sunday of the year, a lot of good games on the card. And uh, if you want to get them, folks, this is what you have to do. you got to get in touch with uh, our exclusive toll-free number at the Jim Hurley Network, 1-800-323-4453. Again, toll-free, 1-800-323-4453. Or else you can check us out at jimhurley.com. That's jimhurley, H-U-R-L-E-Y.com. Like I said, I'm not lying about it. We swept last week in college. Not going to sweep every week, but not going to lie about it. But we're going to pound out a nice, profitable season here in both the colleges and pros, and uh, we're, go we're going to get some winners here Saturday and Sunday. Well, that, that's a great week, uh, Joe. And, and uh, <clears throat> I know you're prepared. I'm prepared. You know, it takes a lot of work, 
and it's fun. We love doing it, and we're not complaining. It's uh, <laughs> it's just it's a great thing to be able to do for a living, to be good at it, to enjoy it. And we both have been doing it a long time. And you didn't need to bring up the fact that I've been doing it longer than you. I mean, that's, you know. <laughs> but in any case, it's been, it's been fun. Uh, anything else you want to discuss before we get off of here? Well, you know what? We talked about, obviously, we talked about the Falcons, inability, red zone. Uh, everyone seemed to think in the summer that NFL totals were going to go up because of rule changes and whatnot. I'm not so sure that's going to be the case, so I want people out there to check it out. I mean, we're definitely going to have some totals played involved with the Jim Hurley Network this Sunday in the NFL, and then we've got the two games Monday night, of course, Jets, Lions, and Rams, Raiders. But uh, don't be so quick, you know, as a, as a handicapper out there to simply think, wow, you know, we've got these rule changes, they want offense, 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 every game's going to be 50-plus points. It's not going to happen that way. You saw it last night. Teams are a little rusty. Teams do get a little shoddy quarterback play. So be careful out there. That's my main thing. There's a lot of guys, and I've talked to some buddies this summer, guys that have been around the block for a while, and a couple of them are saying, you know, they, they think they're going to see a lot of, you know, 40-38 type of NFL games. But said, don't be so sure. I said, I bet when it's all over and done with, the overs and unders are going to be right around 50-50 for the year. So keep an eye on that. And, you know, if you're playing on your own, don't be so quick to just tell your guy over. You know, check it out, see, and again, see what we have at 1-800-323-4453. Well, I'll tell you, if the overs and unders, if, if what we saw last night is representative of what <laughs> we're going to see on Sunday, I would not want to be betting overs. But like I said, some teams will break out with big offensive games, and they don't have the defenses these two teams have either. But, you know, the, the thing about about this whole thing is years ago, a couple of years that two, three years ago, Bill Belichick said because of the collective bargaining agreement, the players can't practice in pads. They can't practice the number of hours they used to. They're not allowed to have, be in hitting drills as much because they're trying to protect the players. And that's, that's a good thing. The problem with it is, as he said, and this is just me, it's as he said, it takes about three or four weeks of the regular season before these teams get into football shape. Now, if that's the case, you've got to look at the first four weeks of the season differently than you will the rest of the season. So you don't win or lose the Super Bowl in week one, two, or three. That comes down later. And unless there's key injuries on your team or other team, those, those things are going to be determined later. It's a long season, you know, and, and don't jump out there and say, oh, my God, you know, Atlanta can't win the Super Bowl because of what they did last night. That may be the case uh, because they've had, a, you know, like I mentioned about the offensive coordinator and the number of points they don't score anymore. So that, that could be the case. But I think we have to go a little further before we can make that determination. As far as plays... I've already got, uh, I think, three college football games up and ready right now. And I have uh, a couple totals in the NFL and a couple sides as well. All ready at jimfeist.com. And, uh, you know, the last two of the last three years, I've hit 63.4 and 63.6% in the NFL. That includes totals as well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a great season. And um, I know you are, too, as well, uh, Joe, on Jim Hurley Sports. So for Jim Hurley Sports and JimFeist.com, we'll talk to you again uh, next week. Thank you, Joe. Sounds good. Have a great weekend, Jim. Thank you, too.